As we have seen in our analysis of the DC generator, its primary function is the conversion of mechanical energy to electrical energy. If we now reverse the procedure and connect an electrical power source to the generator, we have a DC motor instead of a DC generator. Motor action can be illustrated by attaching a power source to a conductor which is inside a magnetic field. The electric current creates polarity in the conductor. The south pole of the magnet attracts the north pole of the conductor and repels the south pole. The north pole of the magnet attracts the south pole of the conductor and repels the north pole. This creates movement depending on the direction of the steady magnetic field. The movement also depends on the direction of the current flow through the wire. By changing the polarity of the battery, the conductor now moves in the opposite direction. To see what really happens, let's go to a drawing again. Here a conductor is suspended in a magnetic field. Current flow from a power source creates its own magnetic field in and around the conductor. This field around the conductor reacts with a main magnetic field to cause motion of the conductor either out of the field or into it. The arrow point indicates the direction of the current flow in the conductor. In this case, the flow is toward us. The field of the conductor has the same direction as the main field above the conductor and the opposite direction of the field below the conductor. These two magnetic forces added together distort the lines of the main field upward. The field above the conductor is thus made stronger and the field below the conductor is made weaker. So the conductor moves down. Conversely, when current flows in the opposite direction, that is to say, away from us, the field of the conductor opposes the main field above the conductor. This aids the main field below the conductor, distorting the lines down. The field below the conductor is thus made stronger, while the field above the conductor is made relatively weaker. This forces the conductor to move up. With this basic principle of motor action understood, we can now examine the DC motor. The basic DC motor, like the DC generator, consists of a pair of magnetic poles, an armature made up of a single turn loop, a commutator, and a brush assembly. As we have seen, a conductor in a magnetic field will move when a voltage is applied to it. With a voltage applied, and the magnetic field and current flow as shown, the right conductor will be pushed down, while the left one is pushed up. Since the forces on each conductor are now in exact balance, there will be no more motion. Adding another loop and two commutator segments ensures that at no time will balancing forces cancel each other out. With this setup, there will be motion at all times. As one commutator segment is moved away from the brushes, another now takes its place and the movement continues. The greater the number of loops in the armature, the smoother its motion. For this reason, rotors in practical DC motors have many loops. Since current in the rotor loops must reverse each half cycle, two commutator segments per loop are required. 